We are Team Pedestrian Rush. Ashley Estrada, Brett Wittick, and Kristen Costanza, graduate students at San Jose State University in the Applied Anthropology Program. Our clients, the Alliance Innovation Lab of Silicon Valley, worked in collaboration with our graduate professor, Dr. Jan English Lewick. Welcome to San Jose, California, the capital of Silicon Valley, home to more than 1 million people. With approximately 10,000 residents living in the downtown core, local residents and incoming travelers embody the use of streetscapes through knowledge and the skills to be a pedestrian, automobile driver, and alternative modes of transportation, such as public transportation, scooters, bikes, and rideshare programs such as Uber. For this exploratory project, we utilized this research question as a starting point. What are the key activities, social contexts, and structures of meaning and value associated with street adjacent life? After a team discussion, we narrowed our original research question to focus on the topic of safety. How is the meaning of safety perceived toward roadways and street adjacent activity by the users of this space? At 5 p.m., businesses close up shop, filling these intersections with a rush of users, automobiles, pedestrians, and non-motorized users that either scoot or bike. We were interested in the perception of safety of pedestrian and non-motorized users. In order to elicit the perceived sense of safety of users in relation to the planned vernacular landscape, we focused on non-motorized and pedestrian users of these busy intersections during a hectic time of day, the evening rush hour. To better understand the daily activities, movements, and enactments of safety or non-safety in the downtown area, our team conducted structured observations and collected photographic evidence. The structured observations gave us an understanding of the intersections that are most impacted by human activity. Once we were able to narrow down our research sites to two separate intersections, we placed ourselves on each corner of the intersections and conducted semi-structured interviews in real time with users making their way to their next destinations. Our participants ranged from single users, couples, and groups of five or more. A map layout of the intersections, much like the one shown, was utilized as a visual tool to help the users situate themselves in the intersections. The purpose of this visual instrument was to aid the users in envisioning an aerial view of the overall intersections in order to gauge their perception of safe zones or areas that they felt safe as users interacting with automobiles in this one-way vernacular landscape. We decided to present the user with the situation. You call an Uber. Where would you feel safe being picked up in this intersection? We created personas in order to illustrate our data. We will first introduce the urban plan perspective. In order to alleviate traffic flow for automobile users, urban planners created one-way roads. The construction of one-way roads has an effect on automobile users' speed as these roads are often quite wide. Thus, the automobile users tend to drive faster on the one-way roads which can lead to higher risk for pedestrian and alternative automotive safety. An urban planner brings their own flair to the vernacular landscape in order to provide a safe environment to the many moving pieces, whether automobile, non-automotive user, or pedestrians. However, not all planned landscapes correspond to people's needs and may not allow for the safest route at the end of the day. Here we meet up with Clara and Jace as they head out to their next destination after a day in the downtown area. Clara has asked Jace to walk with her using a buddy system as she feels unsafe by external elements on the streetscape, such as displaced residents, 
reckless driving from motorized and non-motorized users, navigating one-way intersections, pedestrian crowds, and knocked over scooters. At the street corner, they decide to separate in order to make it to their final destination in the most convenient way possible. Jace opens up his Lime app to locate the closest scooter to his location and is successful in locating a scooter. He then uses his phone to connect the signal, checks the scooter battery, and scans the barcode to activate his ride. Jace pushes off, moving with the flow of the one-way traffic, but takes the bike lane to not disrupt the pedestrian and non-motorized traffic flow. He navigates around potential threats to safety, such as mistreated scooters left in inconvenient locations, automobiles pulling into parking garages, parking spots on the other side of the bike lane, and rideshare automobiles picking up their passengers in the bike lane. Jace parks his scooter in a row of unofficial scooter parking spots. He takes out his phone, reopens the app, closes out the transaction, and heads in to get a midday coffee, dodging bikes and pedestrians on the way. Clara joins the evening rush as she crosses the one-way intersection, only to have a negative interaction with an automobile that cuts her off after an exchange of misunderstandings between her and an automotive driver due to conflicting signals. Clara makes it safely across the street and orders an Uber through the rideshare app. Clara has to cancel and reorder a ride as the previous driver was a male. She faces anxieties being a female passenger riding alone with a male driver. Clara finally secures a female driver and receives a phone call. Hello. Yeah, this is Clara. Hi, okay. Yeah, I'll meet you um, across the street where the parked cars are. Okay, cool. Thank you. Bye-bye. One main concern that pedestrian and non-motorized users had was the inability to see oncoming traffic while making a turn at an intersection. An ocular device could permit the users to scan the intersection for potential hazards. This proposed ocular device could work in tandem, connecting ocular device to traffic camera in order to bring a sense of perceived safety to the users. An additional suggestion is to designate safe pickup locations for rideshare users. These safe locations would be out of the way of heavy, ongoing traffic and situate its own traffic flow of pulling up, allowing the rideshare user to safely get in and head to their next destination. Ultimately, we are not trying to fix the future. We are just trying to forecast different alternatives. The implications of our research can help to inform other research teams that aim to uncover perspectives of safety, incidents of safe and unsafe encounters on streetscapes, and how streetscape users can utilize and navigate such scenes. As we look towards the future of user safety in the urban environment, we can imagine an influx of surveillance.